Today I'm going to show off the objects in Racetrack Builder. Different objects exist in different X-Packs. So um, in the race day one we've got ones related to racetracks. We'll open this up and create a new venue and we'll select the objects. And to begin with you see the first 12 objects in the uh, pack. You can uh, use this drop down list box to select just grass or if you want just the, the cones. Um, let's let's do some cones to begin with. You can select um, you know different objects there. We'll jump jump down there and start clicking and, and dragging to wherever you want that cone to be. It's just going to cycle through those that are selected. If you just want one, if I just wanted to select the, the yellow cone for instance, you can just right click there. Um, if I right click again, it will select all of them. Um, so it will cycle through the ones that we've got selected. Um, there's different ways of adding objects. You can create a straight line, change the distance between each object in that straight line, um, or you can create a, a lasso of objects. Um, you can change the, the density there of the objects, and um, you get a lot more cones. Um, so there's different objects here. Obviously, you can switch between them easily and. Um, RTB is going to remember the selections you did there. You can add objects into here. Um, if there were more tires that filled up all here, you'd see more here. Um, but you can actually add any object that you like. I've got a pit board, pit board marker there, um, or braking marker. And um, so you you can put whatever objects in there you like. Um, if it fills up, it'll just overwrite whatever you're clicking on. Um, so if you've got different markers that you want in there, you can do that. Um, so we'll add a couple of those. There they are. Um, if you want to move the objects around now and edit those, um, you can just click and drag. Or if we zoom in a bit more. If you want to rotate these, um, hold the R key. I will be adding gizmos eventually so that you can just drag these around without holding keys. But for now, hold the R key and if you click on the top of it it will rotate through that axis. If you click on one of the sides it clicks on the other axis. Um, you can force it to rotate uh, through the vertical axis by holding the Y key down as well. Um, so regardless now of where I click that object it's going to rotate around the Y key. Um, there's some different properties that we'll see uh, for these objects. If I um, just raise this up a bit, so we'll just um, raise the property. You can see all the objects that are now sitting on top of them. Um, if we want to turn that off though, if you want some objects to, to sit um, uh, in midair or, or be raised or be seated somewhere that other than sitting on the ground, you can go to the properties here and you can turn off this rest on ground. Now when I move that, they all sink underground. Um, if I were to turn that back on, they all pop up to the, the surface again. Um, and with tracks, if you've got a track going through there, you can see that they're now all sitting on the surface of the, the track. If we change this track, so we put, um, let's put a bit of a dent in it. Oops, I didn't quite grab that. Pull those down pull those down, they all update. Um, so it's it's um, it's doing a lot of work there for you. Um, the other thing we can do, we'll jump back here, actually while we're with terrain, um, you can turn off the objects using this, so if you want to declutter while working on it, you can work away and do, do whatever you like, turn the objects back on and uh, they come back into play. You can leave that set off and if you click this icon obviously you need to see the objects that you're working on so it'll, it'll show them again. Um, you've got some other properties there, Cast Shadow and, and I'll be adding a few more there that are supported in games. Um, I don't actually cast shadows yet in RTB, I plan to but at the moment it won't. Um, you've got the concept of different groups so when I was adding these They'll, they'll be grouped up um, when you create a, a new line of objects. 
we'll see a new set of objects there, marker boards. So it tries to use whatever names you've got. If I just had the one object selected there, it'll use the name of that object. Um, otherwise it'll get as close as possible. So it creates these groups. You can switch off the creating of groups. Um, so it'll just keep adding those to the, the um, default group. Or if you've got one selected, it'll be added to that. So here I've added cones. If I hide unselected, that's the group that was created for those cones. I can now add marker boards to that set there. Um, if I turn that on and off, you can see everything else except for the objects contained in there um, as shown. So a couple of other things. You can split those out into their own groups. If I had these cones selected and I said, OK, I want um, this to be in their, their own group, um, you can say split, and it creates another group there. And then we've got this hidden. So it um, yeah, you can see that we've created that own group there. To add other X-Packs, um, X-Packs are the expansion packs in which we've got other objects. Uh, here you'll see winter trees and over time we'll get a lot more of these and the community can make those as they did for BTB. Um, there'll be another tutorial on, on X-Packer, that's the, the thing for making X-Packs. But um, now we've got extra trees here. If you do get extra X-Packs, they just go into a folder. Um, called X-Packs under your Documents Racetrack Builder folder. And um, so now we've got trees selected there. It's now in the group of things and I've right-clicked on there to select them all. And um, now we can create a row of trees. We want a bit more separation. Um, there you go. We've got a row of trees. There's obviously something going on with all the flickering and you'll see that the angles are all changed a bit. This is the randomness that you you can design into different objects um, as they come in. So um, if you wanted to override that randomness, let's just create one of the big trees. Uh, we'll override the randomness and we'll say, let, let's create something up to five times as big, 500%. Um, and now when we create a row of trees you can see they're a lot bigger than the, the earlier ones we created. Um, and again we can just drag those and move them around, they're all separate objects. When you export they get grouped up and um, through efficiency uh, bound together um, so that they're not all individual objects being rendered up. Um, but the, the display in RTB works pretty well, you can create um, a lot of objects. If I just leave that on, we'll create a lasso of objects. We'll just turn this down a little bit um, and we won't override the randomness. And if I just zoom out and stick a lot of objects there, creates them. Let's just click over here so we haven't got any selected. So it's it's rendering. Um, rendering in pretty good frame rate there um, and you know, if we do want to make updates to the, the terrain um, then we can I'll just make that a little bit larger you can see that I'm painting away under there and everything just delays a little bit uh, with priority going to your your work that you're doing on the terrain and then it pops up the trees afterwards so um, yeah, works um, pretty well. Um, so there's more work yet to be done on, on the interface and, and um, the gizmos for controlling the objects and um, these trees at the moment are all uh, X trees um, and um, I will be creating some proper three dimensional trees but once we've got complex objects in, uh, for those familiar with Bobstrack Builder complex objects was the ability to have child objects so that you could have branches that are separate objects and create randomness with that. So once that's in there, which shouldn't take me too much longer, um, then we'll have more three-dimensional trees. These are great for sort of semi-distant trees, um, but when close up you, you see that they're obviously not a real tree. Um, 
the other thing that I'm going to be working on is um, the string objects. So that allows you to, you know, some of these objects, um, such as the rumble strips, if we just go back to the selection, select all of those, jump down here, um, creating, oops, creating a line of those. Uh, if we just change that again, a line of those isn't really too useful at the moment. Yes, we can go and rotate all of those and line them up, but the string objects actually makes that job a whole lot easier. So I can hold R now and change that. Um, but um, really, this this sort of stuff will get good once um, we get string objects in there. And um, again, that shouldn't be too far away. That and complex objects is my next priority, I think. Um, and hopefully some improvements in the interface for objects. Thanks for watching.